So for expected value and variance, first thing we'll talk about is expected value. So an expected value is some kind of measure of your average of your random variable. Okay. Or you could think of it as like a weighted average. Okay. Because some things, some outcomes will be more likely than other outcomes. So you don't want to just find a normal average. You want to kind of weight it by which outcomes are more likely. Or we'll often think of our expected value as some kind of long run average. So what would happen in the long term? If we did this many times, kind of what would be our average or what would we expect to get? <coughs> okay. And we'll often call our expected value the mean of the random variable. Okay. So mean is another word for average. So first, let's learn how we can find our expected value of a discrete random variable. So the mean, or we'll use this mu. Okay. So again, in this class, this is kind of our technical statistics class. We use a lot of notation. So this mu is our mean. Okay. So our mean mu, or we'll say expected value e of x. The way you do this is you do each x value times its probability and then sum them up. So again, each x value times the probability, sum them up. So sum of each probability, or each x, times its probability. If you're going to write it out in a less technical way. So let's try an example. Let's say we're playing a simple game with dice. If you roll an odd number, you get $1. If you roll a 2, you get $3. If you roll a 4, you get $6. If you roll a 6, you lose $5. So let's let x be the amount of money that you actually get. So we'll start by kind of making some tables. okay? Because this doesn't really seem like they gave me too much to go on. There's not really any formulas or numbers. So I might start by saying, what are all of my possible outcomes? And to each outcome, I can assign an x value. And then to each x value, I can assume, assign a probability. So this does sound like it's discrete. It's not a continuous function. It's I either get a this or this or this. <coughs> discrete ones are always harder to do. Okay. Let's see. If we roll an odd number, we get $1. So an outcome for an odd number, we're rolling a six-sided die. So the outcomes are we roll... Uh, 1, 3, or 5. If I roll a 1, 3, or 5, what do I, let's see, we're talking x is the amount of money you get. So if you roll a 1, 3, or 5, how much money do you get? <coughs> you get $1. And let's see, the next thing you can do is you can roll a 2. So if I roll a 2, I get $3, so the amount of money I get is $3. If I roll a 4, I get $6. So roll a 4, I get $6. And if you roll a 6, I lose $5. So that would be negative $5. <coughs> that negative is very important. Make sure you keep track of which ones are negatives. That affects your answer quite a bit. <coughs> so we have each x value. Now you need to go through and write down each probability. So we're rolling just a normal, plain, six-sided die, assume it's fair. So the probability of getting a 1, 3, or 5, or getting odds, would be 1 half, or 3 out of 6. The probability of rolling a 2, there is 1, 2, so 1, 6. A 4, there's one of those, and five or 6 is, is, again, one of those. So again, we list out all the outcomes. We list out each x value that goes to that, and each probability. Once you have that, you can actually find the expected value. So the expected value, again, you just take the sum and you do each x value times its probability over each of those possible things that we wrote down. Okay, so my first x value is 1 times it by its probability of 1 half. My next x value is 3 times its probability of 1 sixth. My next one is 6 times its probability of 1 6.
And the last one is a negative 5. Make sure you put that negative times its probability of 1 sixth. And as you go through this, there is no shortcut. There are no shortcut formulas. You have to do every single probability times each x value. And first, we even had to figure out what all of those were. But we got 1.16. And what is the interpretation of this expected value? Okay. So here I can say my expected value is $1.16. So what does this mean? What this means is, remember, expected value I set up above can be our long-term average. And so if you look at this, can you get $1.16 on one game? No, our values are $1, $3, $6, or negative $5. So you can't actually get it on one game, but if you play this many times, so if, if you played many, many times, you could expect to get about $1.16 on average per game. So if you play it a thousand times, you could expect to get about $1,160. Okay. Or in other words, this kind of tells you that you'd be coming out ahead. You should be winning a little bit of money each time. Now sometimes you win a lot, sometimes you lose some, but on average, you'll get about $1.16 per game. This next one is actually the very classic example for doing expected values kind of by hand like this. Okay. It's talking about insurance companies. So insurance companies, when they go through and they assign policies, if someone actually is passing away, because this one's talking about life insurance, when someone passes away, they have to pay out a lot of money, right? So what they want to do is they want to make sure that they charge everyone on the premiums enough that they make it up. So they're hoping for all these people that don't actually pass away while they have a policy, they'll make just enough money that they can pay for the person that actually does die, and they'll still make a profit, of course. Let's see, so let's go through this problem. An insurance company sells a $20,000 life insurance policy for an annual premium of $300. Now actuarial tables show that the person who would be sold this specific type of policy with this premium has a .001 probability of death during a year. Let's let x be a random variable representing our profit made on one of these policies during a year. Let's find the expected value of x or the expected profit per year on one policy. Now notice x is our profit, so keep that in mind as you're doing your numbers. And you start with your outcomes and then you'll write down each x value where x is the profit and then you'll do each probability. So if a person buys a policy, after they buy the policy, they only have two possible outcomes, right? During that year, it's either death or lives. Right, the only two options. Now if a person lives, what does the company make in profit? If they live, the company doesn't have to pay out anything, right? So they just keep that entire premium, so they get a profit of $300. Okay. Now, if the person passes away, the company has to pay out $20,000. And so they are losing money, so this is going to be something negative. But how much do they actually lose? Is it the full $20,000? It's 20,000 minus the 300 because they don't give back the premium. So they actually only lose 19,700. Because it's negative 20,000, but they kept the 300, so 19,700. And now the probability for each one. They said that person has a probability of 0 0.001 of death, so 0 0.001 which means the probability of living would have to be 0 0.999 because they have to add up to 1. 
So the expected value of x is you add up each probability, or each x value times each probability. So in our case, we'd have a negative 19,700 times a probability 0 0.001 plus a $300 profit times this probability 0.999. which is 280. So what does this tell us? This tells us that if they sell lots of policies, they can expect to make an average of $280 per person per year. So if they're selling a thousand policies, that's two hundred and eighty thousand dollars in profit. And of course they would want to sell a lot more. Now, would you ever want to be an insurance company that only has ten clients? No, because if you have ten clients and even one passes away, even if that's unlikely, you've only made let's see, ten times you're injured like three thousand dollars in premiums, but you have to pay out twenty thousand dollars now and you're gonna go bankrupt. But if you have thousands and thousands of policies, then all of these positive premiums outweigh the ones that you actually have to pay out, and you're making an average of $280 per person per year. Any questions on how we did that one? And then if you turn the page, so the next one is actually easier because now we have continuous random variables. You don't actually have to go through and think of what numbers to write down for your outcomes and x values and probabilities. You just get to use some calculus. So the expected value for a continuous random variable, now when you have continuous random variables, that's nice because they always just give you a function. Okay. The expected value is you integrate so just like up here, we took the sum of each x value times each probability. So we're going to do almost the exact same thing, but think of it as calculus now. So we'll integrate from negative infinity to infinity, or whatever our values are, x times f of x dx. Because x is like the x, and each probability is kind of like our PDF. And so again, integrate x times the PDF. So x times PDF. And that's how you find expected value. So let's see, we have a certain criminal court judge. Let's see, we already kind of read through this one. It's this judge, f of x is 1 ninth x squared. x goes from 0 to 3. So what is the mean? When you see mean, you're looking for average or expected value. The average length of prison sentences given by this judge. So the expected value or if you prefer the mean of x, would just be equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx. Now that's our official formula. In our case, what are the numbers we care about? We only care about the numbers from 0 to 3, x, and now we put in our PDF. So 1 ninth x squared dx. We'll put this in our calculator and we get 2.25. So our average or expected length is 2.25 years per person. Some people are going to be shorter, some people are going to be longer, but the average is 2.25 years per person. Now sometimes you'll actually want to go through and maybe kind of change your random variable or have a function of your random variable. Now these examples might seem contrived but it is again very useful in actual true applications. So if you have some function h of x of a random variable you can find the expected value by kind of using our exact same formulas, but instead of an x, you put h of x. So like if you were going to do it discreetly, you do the sum of each h of x times p, or if you're doing for continuous random variables, you just take the integral of h of x times f of x dx. 
which is easier than it sounds. So again, here's our second judge. Here's our PDF. Here's our PDF right here. 316 squared of y. y goes from 0 to 4. Now let's suppose that someone decides that instead of using the sentences given by this judge, so again, this sounds like a very made-up problem, they would square the length of the sentences and add 2. What would be our new expected length of sentences? So this is saying we would take every sentence, square it, and add 2. Or my function of y is I do a y squared plus 2. And now we want to find the expected value of this y squared plus 2. Okay, so this is actually much easier than it sounds. You take whatever this y squared plus 2 is and you plug it in here. So we're just going to plug in y squared plus 2 times our PDF. So if you want the expected value of y, you just put a y here. If you want the expected value of y squared plus 2, you put y squared plus 2 here. Okay, now this really becomes the integral from 0 to 4 because that's all we care about. y squared plus 2, my actual PDF is 3 sixteenths square root of y dy. And I get 8.85. And one last note is the median. So if you remember from math classes, the median is the middle part. Okay. Or it's half of your data is below, half of your data is above it. So in our class, we'd say it's a value of a such that the probability that x is less than or equal to a would be 0.5 and the probability that x is greater than or equal to a would be 0.5. So if you want to find the median, you just set f of x, capital F of x, or the CDF equal to 0.5 and solve for x. We're not actually going to do a problem like that yet. It comes up later in our section. <coughs> so here's just a couple examples so you can kind of see some different things. So in these top ones, I have some PDFs, or PMFs, of discrete random variables for the top four. And so you can kind of see, like in this one, we have different x values and the probabilities. And for this one, the expected value of 1.94 is right about here. That's where the average would be. So notice the averages aren't always exactly halfway through. Plus, it'd be hard to see where halfway through is because some of these values are more likely. Or here's another one. Here's your expected value. Okay. Expected value, expected value. Notice on this last one, my expected value is pretty far to the right. You see that? And it's because we had this one value that was very likely, and it kind of pulls it up. Okay. These bottom three are the PDF for a continuous. And again, your average kind of gets pulled by your likely value. So on this one, it's pretty far to the left because these values were much more likely. And so it's far to the left. But it is good for you to know that if you have a distribution that is symmetric, okay, and specifically if it's symmetric about a point A, then the mean, now mean being average, or expected value of x, okay, then your mean and median will both be equal to a, or the point where it's symmetric. And I think you have at least one or two homework questions where they use this. Okay. So for example, if you look at this PDF right here, notice it's symmetric about the number 50. 50 is in the middle. So that means your expected value is equal to 50. And your median is also equal to 50 because it's in the middle. So for symmetric ones, it's kind of nice. Your expected value and median are both exactly in the middle. So expected value will always be in the middle if it is symmetric.